If you just download the ISO Q card, um, I'll just go through ISO um, and try to explain what I think ISO is. Um, there's a lot of different, th if you look on the internet, there's a lot of different descriptions of what ISO actually is now. Um, but in the old days when we used to use film, or if you still use film, um, you used to have a 100 film, a 200 film, a 400 film, an 800 film, 1600 and if you were very lucky you got a 3200 so what they've tried to do is they've tried to keep it standardized um, through digital photography so that we could move from film photography to digital without having to think too much to give you a general idea um, I used to use 200 film most of the time outside um, and I used to use 1600 film for low light photography inside churches or generally inside. If it was really dark and we, we would push the film we'd make it 3200. So all this ISO really is is how sensitive the film or your sensor in your camera is to light. It's a bit like having a dimmer switch on your sensor. Um, as you turn the dimmer switch up it brightens your image so you're brightening as you go this way and as you turn it down you can darken your image. Now I always say that ISO should be fixed um, but you may need to play around with it. You might find a lot of the time you end up at ISO 400 outside in the UK because it uh, can be a bit overcast but don't be scared to move it but just having a fixed point is very important. So I say fix it at 200 for outside and 1600 for inside. So, the next thing to look at with ISO is what's actually going on with noise. There's, if you look in magazines or again on the internet, everyone worries about noise. Um, noise in images is just like film grain. It is a grain, um, but color noise is worse, which is is where you get a mixture of false colors, really. So it, it it's the equivalent of the sensor not really knowing whether a color's red or green. It tr it gets confused, and so you get this speckledy effect or banding. It's the banding and the colour noise that is the worst. Um, I can live with luminance noise which is just like film grain. Um, but software is getting better and better. I'll just come over to the right in Lightroom and just go into the develop module and just show you quickly that Lightroom is your tool for noise now because Adobe have realised that we all want low noise images so they've improved um, the noise section. You go to detail and come down sharpening, zero sharpening then you'll come to noise reduction. Um, you've got luminance noise and colour noise. So just remember those words for now luminance and colour um, and we can reduce luminance and colour noise in Lightroom. So let's go back to the library and just have a look at the cue card again. So as you go from 100 to 200 to 400 to 800, as you go up the scale, colour noise and luminance noise gets worse. So photographers try and keep the ISO down and so they get less noise. It is a bit of a myth to be honest. Um, I've just got the 5D Mark III and it's got some noise at 200 whereas the 5D Mark I was clean. Um, so they are improving these cameras but don't get too hung up on them improving them way beyond 3200 because to be honest with you beyond 3200 most of the cameras or 100% of the ones we can afford um, the top pro cameras can go 6400 with clean enough files but um you really want to be keeping a maximum of 3200. So that's just an overview of ISO. Generally just fix it. Um, use the cue card. If you're outside use 200. If you're inside use 1600. If you suddenly find it gets overcast you can go to 400 or 800. It's just having a fixed point for you to start with. So keep the ISO card and just refer back to it. It just saves thinking really. Um, okay, thanks a lot.